everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now today we're making an under the sea soap and I'm going to start off by extruding some fish. I'm going to do a sort of clown fish. It's going to be orange and black. I'm not going to try and squidge white in there as well. And then also a random yellow fish. I'm using random yellow fish because it just fits in with my assessment. It's one of the colours that I've got that I have to use. So that's why I've got a yellow fish. I keep all of my soap dough really tightly wrapped and vacuum sealed. Um, if you're interested in how to make soap dough or how I store it and look after it, that sort of thing, I've got a whole video on that and I'll link that in the description below. So just to start off, I'm going to take out my soap dough. And as you can see with mine, it's almost sort of like a, almost a waxy sort of texture. One thing you just need with soap dough is it shouldn't be sticky. It needs to pretty well leave your hands clean. And also when you squidge it together, it shouldn't be crumbly. If your soap dough is not a great consistency, then the things you extrude from it aren't going to be a great consistency either. So just make sure you're really rolling it and getting it nice and smooth and pliable and workable before you start extruding. So I'll extrude my yellow fish first of all and just remember when you're extruding some soap dough to try and keep it as straight as you possibly can and that may mean sort of tweaking it and bending it as it comes out of the extruder. Remember you want to straighten it as soon as possible because if you leave it out and it starts to set up at all if you try and bend it at that point it's likely to crack and break and give you all sorts of dents and things in your extrusion. And then once I've extruded enough, I'll just chop that piece off and then measure out enough that's going to fit in my loaf mould. And then I'll just repeat the exercise again until I've got enough yellow fish. And you may have noticed in this video, I've done something a little bit different. There's no picture of the finished soap on the thumbnail to the video. So you haven't seen it yet. So hopefully you'll be looking forward to the cut. Okay, so on to the clownfish now. So I've just popped some orange soap dough into my extruder and I've taken the one fish, two fish extruders that I sell in the shop and I've just sort of chopped the clownfish up into little pieces. So first of all, I'm just going to extrude the orange parts. Now, the reason this weirdly looks like it's coming in from the top of the screen is because I like to rest my extruder over the edge of my sideboard so I can hold it nice and flat as I extrude out my soap dough. And this can be especially useful if you've got a disc where there's several parts being extruded at the same time because it stops them getting all tangled up and muddled. I figured you may have seen enough extruding by now, so I just finished off extruding the orange bits and I've extruded the black bits of my clownfish and now I'm just going to sandwich them together. So I'm just dissecting my clownfish and then I'm just going to layer black, orange, black, orange. And to join them together, I am just going to lightly paint each of the sections with distilled water. Now, if you're trying to get soap to stick, water is what you want to use. I would always use distilled water to stop any chance of getting any um, DOS, dreaded orange spots or anything from anything slightly dirty. So nice, clean distilled water is the best way to go. Water is always good for making soap stick. 
think about when you have maybe a soap that you've used in the shower or something. If you've left it wet and you put it on another bit of soap, it sticks rock hard, doesn't it? Or, you know, if you leave it just on the side, it really sticks really well. So water is your best bet. Rubbing alcohol is the sort of thing that you use with melt and pour soap. And rubbing alcohol with soap dough really is to stop soap sticking. So for example, if you want to keep your tools clean so you can cut through some soap dough, then that's when you want to use rubbing alcohol. So I'll just repeat that for all four of the clownfish that I want. And then I'm just going to make sure they're all nice and firmly pressed together and just trim them to fit my mould. Now let's think about whether we can use these embeds straight away. If you're literally extruding some embeds and you want to pop them in a soap, there's nothing to stop you putting them in the soap pretty soon after extruding them. And to be honest, if you can do that fairly quickly, that's great because you've got a moist bit of soap dough that's going to adhere beautifully to your loaf of soap. But let's imagine I wanted to take my little clownfish and chop it up into slices so it could be embeds on the top of the soap. In that case, you would want to let it sit and set up for a few hours, a good few hours, even potentially until, you know, the next morning or something. Because if you tried to cut it into little slices now, it would just squish and deform. So that's one situation when you should leave them to sit out. What I'm doing here now is another reason why you should let them sit. Any time you've tried to combine some bits of soap dough together, so here with my little soap dough sandwiches I've got, I've combined them and stuck them with some water. At this point, they're pretty slippery. And if you keep mucking around with them and moving them, they will break apart. And also, if you popped them in your soap now, the movement of the soap may actually make them come apart. So this is another situation where you do want to let them sit. Not to make them go firm, but just to make them stick together. So again, if you can leave them for a few hours or overnight, then that will just make sure that these are going to be really stuck and not come apart. And then lastly, I want to have some little bubbles coming up from the fish. So I'm just using one of the plain little round extruder discs that you get with every extruder set and extruding some white soap dough, which I'll then just straighten up into lines and cut those to fit the mould too. OK, so let's get on with pouring our base. And I'm going to be using neon orange some shimmer blue and neon yellow and all of those are from Mica Mama in the UK and the neon orange and the neon yellow is what I've used in my soap dough to make my fish and then I'm also going to be using some activated charcoal and titanium dioxide and then for fragrance I'm using Love and Spell from Nature's Garden So to start my pour, my first layer I want to be the sea bed. So I want to have a brownie type of colour. I don't want it solid, so I'm going to mix it in with a little bit of black so we haven't just got one solid colour. So here I'm just mixing up the amount of soap that I need to make that base layer. So I've just got my melted oils and my lye. And I'll just blend those to bring them to emulsion. Then for my brown, well, I can't use brown, I don't have it in my assessment, um, but I do have my neon orange and I do also have black. So I know by combining those two together, I can get myself a brown. So I'm just adding a little bit of activated charcoal at a time until I get to the brown colour that I want. 
and I'm just keeping a track of what I'm using. I'm just putting in one quarter of a teaspoon at a time. So I know how much I've used, so I know how much I've got to use in the rest of my soap as well. Now, obviously, if you don't have to stick to strict assessments like we do in the UK with exactly how much of everything we have to put in our soaps, you can be a bit freer with this process. And hey, you could actually use a brown mica if you wanted, <laughs> save all this mucking around. Now, the only reason I'm explaining things like that is because if you're new to my channel, you might wonder what the dickens I'm doing and why I'm not just using a brown mica rather than sort of what may seem unnecessarily mixing colours. So once I'm happy with my colour, I'm going to add my fragrance oil. Now, Loving Spell from Nature's Garden doesn't accelerate, so that's great. I've got a little while to play with it. And then I'm just going to pour off a portion of this brown and then add the remaining black that I need to use up. So I've got a two-tone base for the bottom of my C scene. So I'm just going to do a simple in the pot swirl for the base of my soap. So just taking that darker brown and pouring it into the lighter brown and just making sure with an in the pot swirl that you lift your pot up and down so that the colour that you're adding sinks all the way through the soap batter. Otherwise you can end up with just big blobs of one colour or the other. And then a quick swirl round with your spatula. Now here, I'm actually mixing mine a reasonable amount because I do want my two colours quite well mixed. If you're doing an in-the-pot swirl and you wanted some nice pretty swirls in your soap, then you would probably just do one tiny little stir with your spatula. And then just simply pouring it into the mould. Now you will see here that I don't use up all of my soap batter. That's because I'm making two of these soaps at the same time. So half of it's going to go into my other soap. Now I don't want my seabed to be completely flat. So I've just got a little pile of mats that I've put under the side of my mould to tilt it a little bit. Then I'll just go back over with my spatula and move the soap around to get the shape that I want and a slightly textured surface. And then I'm going to do a piece of seaweed going up through the middle of the soap. So I'm just very gently just dragging a small stick through that base after it's set up a little while. Just so I've got sort of like an indentation where I can sort of ground that bit of seaweed. So on to the main pour. So I've made up enough soap batter for my two loaves that I'm making. And I want to have obviously blue for my sea colour. And I want to have some green for my seaweed colour. So I'm just mixing my blue mica into my soap batter that I've made up. Now in my assessment I don't have a green but I do have a blue and a yellow. So I'm going to use those to make the green that I want. And then once I'm happy with my green, I'm going to just pop the rest of that blue that I haven't yet used into my blue for my C. And then just finishing off with some titanium dioxide to get the lighter blue colour that I want. Okay, so our colours are now done. Just need to add our fragrance oil and then we can start our pour. So for our main pour to complete the C scene, 
I obviously want most of it to be blue and then I'm going to drop in the little embeds, the fish and the bubbles that we made earlier. But for the seaweed, I want to do that using a hidden feather technique. Now by using the hidden feather technique, I want to create the seaweed so it doesn't look too rigid. I didn't want to do it with soap dough and make an embed. I want it to sort of look like it's sort of floating around in the sea and affected by the currents and the movements of the water. Now my soaps are actually going to be a tall and skinny. They're not super, super skinny. They are 63 mil, so 6.3 centimetres wide. But yeah, they're a tall and skinny shape. And I also want to have fish either side of this piece of seaweed. So that's why I've poured my green into a squeeze bottle so I can be really precise with where I actually lay down my pour for my piece of seaweed. And then again, the same for some of the blue, just the bit that I want to accurately pour over my hidden feather, just so I make sure I can be really precise. OK, so let's bring our mould in. And I don't know how well you can see it, but do you remember that little channel that we drew right at the bottom in the seabed? Well, I'm first of all going to go in and fill that with some green soap so that it looks like the base of the seaweed is actually attached to the bottom of the seabed. And then I'm just going to go over that with my first layer of blue for the sea. Now I'm just pouring this straight out of my jug because I just want a whole layer over the base. But I am using a spatula because I want to be careful. I don't want this blue to move the green out of the little channel that I've just put it into. And then I'm just going to work my way up the mould. So using my squeeze bottle to very deliberately put the green for the seaweed where I want it to go. So I'll do a layer of the green. And then I'll go over that again with the squeeze bottle so I can be very, very careful because I don't want to displace my seaweed. And I'll gradually and gently go over it with a layer of the blue. And as I work my way up my mould, I'm going to take my fish one at a time and drop them in very carefully down the side because I don't want to ruin my piece of seaweed. I want these fish to look like they're coming up to the seaweed. And then I'll just carry on with that all the way up through the mould, very carefully pouring that piece of seaweed and gradually dropping my fish in to build up my soap.
Okay, so we've nearly got to the top of the soap. So I'm just going to take my hanger tool. It literally is just a piece of wire and I've wrapped some cling wrap around it and I'm just gently pushing it down through the centre or where I've done that hidden feather swirl. Now, I didn't put any embeds in that right hand side of the mould so I can now pull my tool across the base and then up to the top and I did take a note and measure on my tool where that base comes to so I don't scuff the base of the soap either. And now that's done I can fill in that little tiny gap in my clownfish just before I drop it into the soap so I don't get any air holes in my soap. And that can now go in the side that I needed to leave empty for my hanger tool to come out. And then I can just finish off by adding those last little white bits of soap dough which make the little air bubbles that are coming out of the fish's mouths.
Then to finish off the top of my soap, I want to have some seaweed and some bubbles going through the seaweed on the top of the soap. I don't want to pipe it or make it out of soap dough or anything, so I'm just going to use my squeeze bottle to draw the picture of the seaweed on the top and then just drop on some little white bits of soap to put some bubbles going through the seaweed. So as normal, I covered my soap and I sea popped it overnight and here we are the next day ready for our cut. And here are little under the sea soaps. Oh, I'm really pleased with those. I really like the way that that secret feather has given some movement to the seaweed. It's not a precise sort of solid piece of seaweed. To me, it does actually look like the sea is causing it to sort of flow around. And I like my little fish and my little fish bubbles. Um, I hope you like this soap too. I've had lots of fun making it. And I think the combination of the um, hidden feather technique um, has worked really well to give us that piece of seaweed in the middle of those embeds. And here are some pictures of the final soaps. These soaps will be for sale in the March the 6th shop update. I'll leave a link to the shop in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you like the soap. If you have, it'd be great if you gave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? And if you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!